You can go ahead and make an opportunity attack. Yeah, motherfucker, I know what he's doing! But it's going for your friends. No! 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 <laughs> <laughs> Hello, dear friend. Welcome back. The architect has made his appearance in Ethos. His hand extends from the rift, and all of Anamnesis bear witness to his arrival. Just as they gaze towards the Red Being's hand, the Rift Seekers are granted visions. Each one of them finds themselves ankle deep in dark liquid. The smell of iron is strong and permeates their nostrils. The sky is black and empty, apart from a singular glowing red dot, high into the infinite void. Our protagonists grow stronger, and now we get to see them take another step forward to becoming the heroes that Ethos needs. I see moons of red. <laughs> red <laughs> and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Whole festivals on fucking pawns. I see to myself. What a wonderful day! Hold <laughs> on. <laughs> we finally saw that last night. It was so good. Yes. And then he keeps saying it throughout the movie. Yeah. Like <laughs> when they walk in, he goes. What a wonderful day! <laughs> it's just like a dude. I'm like, what the fuck? You're saying that everybody else is like, wow, this is a good movie. You're like, no, the entire. It was so funny because I didn't expect it. Like the first one, I'm like, oh my god, it's happening. And then they meet him again, and he goes, what a wonderful, wonderful day! day. <laughs> I'm like, the fuck? He says it again. I imagine. Twice in one day, you're smothering me. Welcome back to Fragments of the Lost Home. So let me paint you a picture of where we are right now. <laughs> the void. Right now. So the last thing uh, you guys did, you were uh, having a grand old time in the festival, doing the Rift Seeker sweep, fucking annihilating the competition in every single event. As you guys are watching the main event, the High Driver race, as you were looking above you, the High Drivers racing overhead, you see a golden stream of light coming from three different directions, and they swirl around the rift. As that happens, um, <clears throat> there's like this surge of energy and the rift opens like a portal. Lightning arcs all around it. You, there's this like shock wave of energy. Boosh, clouds part ways. And all of a sudden, coming through the portal of the rift is a massive red hand. Cosmic in size, gargantuan. So where you guys are at right now, you'd be looking at the hold, which are the mountains that surround the crater. The rift is at the very center of it. That is its entire region of itself. That rift is massive on its own and you can see it from where you are. And so when you see this hand, the size of it is just beyond comprehension you would know that the body of whatever this thing is would blot out the entire sky. So as this hand reaches out, you hear this like shattering sound. It echoes out, there's a flash of light and all of you are transported into an unfamiliar area and you just feel something watching you, peering into your very soul. With that, we're gonna do some individual things. Yeah, right off the bat, it's okay. But we can all stay here for one person. What? This special little thing. So. What? 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 <laughs> what? Oh. Hey, everybody. My name is Jamie. <laughs> I'm no I, I, <laughs> I just want you to remember me for what I truly was a homie. And a bitch. And if you like the death that you see, please consider liking, commenting. <laughs> <laughs> Join our Discord! Join yeah, the Discord! We love talking. <laughs> we love making friends. You, you can come I chat with us. We're very fun. We're very friendly. Okay. We're very nerdy. You like art? You like cream? <laughs> yeah, if, you like to, if you like to cream, like cream, come on down. Who's ready to cream? Discord server. And archives. <laughs> 
the end archive Discord server link in description. It really is. <laughs> hey, <laughs> along with all of our Instagrams, that you should also right. consider. It's following. in all the it's descriptions. In. <laughs> the fact that we haven't gotten spammed by bots is impressive. <laughs> I've, oh, I said it on a thing where like that really can't happen. Oh, even even if it does, like it's it's user. set to like a limit. So okay, yeah. got it. Okay, so who first? It is you, Mikhail. Oh, You're okay. first on the list. So, at first, you're tra- like as you see this hand, light flashes immediately. You are in this dark plane. Everything around you after the flash of light just disappears. The sky is black. You smell blood. Smell of like rich Irish. iron. You are ankle deep in this dark red liquid. There is nothing in the sky except for a tiny red dot vast up into the heavens. That thing is looking at you. You feel it in your very soul. And as you're like gazing into this thing, actually, okay, let me rephrase this. All of you would be seeing this right now, individually, but we'll go to you right after that. But all of you individually are seeing this. Yeah, so yeah, you all know this. Um, You should know this too. So as you are all looking up at this thing, your your attention is drawn to it. You hear something speak in a loud whisper and it just reverberates off the space around you, like it's <coughs> bouncing off the walls in your mind. I see you. Tethered souls on my divine creation. How interesting. The red light then fades away. Each one of you would then feel a presence in this domain coming from like behind you. And as you turn around, you catch a glimpse of someone you've never seen before. Mirage, you see a silhouette of a smaller figure, large ears. As you turn around and see that, it begins to look over its shoulder. Light flashes, you're somewhere else now. Dara, as you turn, You don't see anything, but you feel the presence of something there. Light flashes, light flashes, and you're in a different area. Ornan, you turn, you see two things. You see a figure standing beside what looks to be a crystal of some sort, massive in size, maybe about seven, eight feet tall. It's a massive crystal. You can't discern any colors, but there's something inside of it. Light flashes and you're in a different area. Macau, you turn around. You sense You sense a presence beside you and one farther away from you. Immediately turning, you see Ambrose, but it doesn't feel like Ambrose. His aura is completely different. And as you turn even more, you see two figures. Light flashes and you're in a different area. Both of them casted in shadow. Now, 
we will go to Macau. What the fuck? <laughs> Macau, you know, find yourself back in ditch, and it looks exactly like how you remember it. You're on a dark street, broken cobblestone path, um, rusted, almost abandoned-looking buildings. At the end of this street, you see a blue tiefling with pink hair dressed in, like, dark clothing. It stands up over a body that's on the ground. Blood starts to pool. This tiefling turns around and its face is casted in shadow. You see bright white glowing eyes with like like white energy kind of like rising up from the eyes. It turns around and looks at you and then its mouth opens and you see this Cheshire cat smile and it's just white, pure white. Its body looks exactly like you, but it's the face that's the only thing that's different. And it looks at you. You can't survive without me. Begins to take steps towards you. You will never be feared like me. I am stronger. I am better. I am better! It begins walking towards you. Um, it wouldn't... Oh, it would actually have the rope dart. It would bring it out, start twirling it, and walks towards you. You feel this thing have malice in its soul. And it's walking towards you with anger. It wants something from you. Your heart starts beating faster as you see this thing coming towards you. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? You are present in this situation. It wants something from me? Mm-hmm. You feel like it wants something from you. So, like, at first when it starts walking towards me, I'm standing nice and resolute. I'm just standing there, like, because I'm like, what the fuck? I'm confused. I'm like, what's going on? And then the closer it gets, I will start, like, kind of backing up a little bit. Um, and I will just ask it, what do you want? As it keeps walking forward, you see behind him, the area grows darker, almost like you can't see past him. Bodies, as he walks, start to form around him. So as, like, as he steps, a body like fades in on the ground. You don't recognize any of these people. So the background behind him fades away, but these bodies remain. And as he keeps walking towards you, I want, I yearn to live again, to be free, just me. You're in the wrong place. You've taken everything away from me. You are a scared little boy. I was free. No worries whatsoever. I could choose to do whatever I want. And you are taking it away from me. I was better than you. Stronger. And now you are tied down. And with that, as you begin to like take more steps back, you hear a shackle forms around your leg and your ankle, and it ties you down in place as this thing keeps walking towards you. Rope dart spinning. Do I, so I'm, so I'm present in this. Do I have my, my leg? Okay. I think for the first time in a hot minute, Cow is feeling genuine terror. Uh, and tries to keep walking backwards and it doesn't work <clears throat> so he falls and he's trying to pull his leg out of whatever the fuck is there 
and even as terrified as he is, he looks up at this thing, and through his teeth, you, you weren't living. You were the world's longest suicide note, you fuck! Go ahead and make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. <laughs> Wisdom saving throw. Nineteen. As you stare at him and yell, he stands for a second, and he looks up past you. You feel someone behind you. They kneel down and break a shackle. You see Ambrose look over at you, puts a hand on your shoulder. You tell him, that's not you anymore. I'm here for you. And Ambrose looks over and looks this thing dead in the eyes. You can't save him. Only I can. We survived. You will only drag him down. And he begins walking again. He's going to make an attack now. He's going to throw that rope dart at you. Okay. That doesn't hit. Don't fuck. He goes Are you sure? and throws it, and Ambrose lifts in hand, and Eldritch blasts, and poof, the rope dart flies wide. This thing you see is, it's like, it still has this like Cheshire cat grin, but it like opens his mouth and you see just like, like steam just. And now it's just, it's fuming pissed right now. So I'm, I have the like chain around my ankle, but it's not attached anymore. I can move freely. You still, you have other shackles tied to you. Several? Well, okay. Actually, no, hold on. What? Yeah, that one is unlocked. Okay. You can move if you want to. Okay, cool. I would like to football tackle this fuck. I literally just scrabble forward and I book it and I just around the waist, boom, onto the ground. Make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. 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 A natural 20. Nice. It's an 18 plus two. Wonderful. <gasps> As ah. you begin running towards this thing, you feel like the distance get longer and longer. Like you can't reach him. There's still something like holding you back from reaching him. But you feel another presence. Ornan, how would you help Macau get over this? As he is trying to charge down this creature of the past. Sorry, play, play out the scene again, sorry. Macau is running towards this thing it's rope dart is like by its side. This thing looks angry, malice, pure malice. And Macau scrabbles up from the ground and just starts booking at this thing and is trying to make a tackle, but the distance gets longer. But now you're here to help. I would probably attempt to lasso him and just bring him closer. Sure, you definitely do that. Macau, you see a like lasso just past your vision. It wraps around him and you see this thing like look down and goes, what is this? No! And then he is dragged straight towards you. What, did you make a make an attack now? Just With unarmed. advantage. Okay, I just be unarmed. With advantage. Same thing, 18. Wonderful. This thing is yanked towards you. This thing is and then you just the dis you don't close the distance, but this lasso that Ornan has now tied against him brings this thing towards you, and you're able to football tackle it to the ground and it just falls and arms at its side, rope around it. And it just looks up at you and it smiles again. You can't hurt me. You can't. Sure. Give him money. No. 
now. Both Ornan and Ambrose are at your side. Um, I'm gonna grab in front of his shirt. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna full body, not even just arm. I just put <laughs> in, in the face. Okay, yeah. So you tackle him to the ground, you lift him up, and then with the force of your entire body, beat him across the face. And I go to do it again. Okay. just keep going. You keep punching him, and it feels like you were just like laying into him, but as you do, you feel hurt yourself. Not physically, but almost like a part of you is dying. You begin to feel weakened as you keep punching this thing and you keep laying into it, laying into it until your body doesn't allow you to continue. And this thing, its head like leaning on the side just looks back up. Its smile goes back. You can't live without me. It breaks through to the lasso poof, and then grabs you by the collar and then it goes, lifts itself up. You are now face to face with this thing. You smell the heavy scent of ditch resting on this creature. You smell blood that is caked, soaked into the very fabric of its clothes. You were looking at the past and it still haunts you. Make a wisdom saving throw. Let's know in German. Nine. 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 Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Your body still feels weak, and this thing now stands up, and you are still like kneeling on the ground from where you were from just beating him. He towers over you. You feel weak as a shadow grows over you you begin to feel cold who are you without me I'm the it leans into your face its nose almost touching yours you're you are looking straight into its pure white eyes that are just cold and dead You are the ditch digger. You will always be the ditch digger. You can never escape your past. And then he holds you by like your hair and lifts you up and throws your gaze towards all the bodies piled around him. That darkness that was only growing past him goes forward and the rest of Ditch begins to like fade into black. Do you really believe? Do you truly think you are who you say you are? That you've changed? Look at me! You had your time. It's my turn. I want to live. I don't want to be you anymore. I have friends. Make it with you. You scare me. Good. Make a wisdom saving throw with advantage. Okay. Oh no! Advantage. Um, 16. It was almost a 20. That would have been sick as fuck. This thing seems to grow larger as you look at it (laughs) and you feel fear. Dara, how would you help seeing this shadow of Macau growing taller? Macau on his knees looking at this thing. Fear in his heart. What would Dara do to help? <laughs> and it's on top. Yeah, just- this this thing is like looking down, but it has its hand on his like shirt and it's like holding him up. 
it just it just seems like this like the shadow of this thing is growing larger like from your perspective and it's overpowering Macau. Okay. Uh, I would in this instance I would probably end up using Shield of Faith to place an actual like illusory shield between you and it. Understood. <laughs> you feel a third presence. You hear the clanking of chain mail as Dara stoically walks up beside you. What does Shield of Faith look like? Uh, Describe how you're casting mine it. Mine yeah. would be just a green uh, kite shield, basically, mm-hmm. with vines off the front. Wonderful. You see that just... <laughs> in a bright light, a bright like iridescent arcane energy, just yeah. poof, and that green kite shield with vines appears in front of you, severing this thing's arm from you. And this thing like takes a step back and is like unbalanced. Dara is standing beside you. The shadow begins to shrink. And this thing now is starting to look scared like it's losing it did not expect this <sighs> what is this you shouldn't be here he's mine <laughs> this thing just looks baffled <laughs> what the fuck we're both I don't know side by side spectral bitches Spectral bitches! <laughs> get him, get spectral him, get the hand, just spectral hand of Ornan and Dara just <laughs> from the void. Six different hands! Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a cool image in my head, even though it's so fucking goofy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Macau, what are you doing? You now have three friends beside you who are just all looking up at this thing. Its arm is now severed, it falls in front of you, just. <laughs> I still feel like if I try to hit it, nothing's going to happen. Make an insight check. I have no idea. That was a five. Five in total? Five in total. You know... Three on the back. I will give you advantage because this is you. You wouldn't. You would know you. I would. <laughs> Does he? That's the question. It's the same. Okay. <laughs> That's twice. The That's only the thing you would feel is that your strength is drawn from this thing, and if it shrinks, so too do you. That's what you feel. But after saying you were scared of it, it was almost like there was a disconnection from this thing. But with your friends here, they are giving you the power you need to stay who you are. Then I will get to my feet and I will start walking towards it like it was walking towards me. It stands still. And I will as I, as I, anime character wipe tears off of my face, I'm looking up to him and go, I don't need you anymore. Yes, you do. I haven't needed you for a long time. Really? Is that so? Yeah, do the math. And I point back at, at Dara and Ornan. Your strength lies in here, not with them. You can't rely on anyone. You feel his presence begin to shrink as he is, it almost seems like he's running out of things to believe in. He's no longer believing in himself. We have survived this cruel world because of me. If you leave me behind, there is nothing for us 
for you! There's plenty. It takes a step back. Roll for intimidation. I'm not doing too good now. <laughs> it takes a step back. <laughs> That's some bullshit! <laughs> It takes a step back and you see that smile begin to like wane, but then it realizes something and his smile grows back. He's learned how to read. <laughs> it looks past you. I know, I know, I know. And his arms go down and you see like shadowy claws just shink, shink. It drags it on the ground as it books it past you. You can go ahead and make an opportunity attack. Yeah, motherfucker, I know what he's doing! But it's going for your friends. No! 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 That's enough. What are you doing? Um, I want to try to triple. Go ahead. I got to triple. Okay, yeah. You s stick your leg out and as it sh poof, <coughs> it like tumbles over and then it like looks up. Ambrose, Dara, and Ornan are looking down upon him and it like scrambles back up ready to attack again. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> and it just Whoosh, looks back at you. Why? I already told you. I want to live! I'm sick of surviving! What happens when everyone else leaves you? What then? It turns around and it's about to just make this massive slash cleaving all three of them. Mirage. <laughs> How do you want to help? I, yeah. Come on. I want to have Shatter hit him, like right in the stomach, and as his body is fucking toppling, I want the guardian hand to reach out and fucking grab him. Just he's, burn he's, him. On his, he's on his feet right now. He's uh -huh. about to make an attack, yeah. but his like shadow claws are like massive, like five feet long claws, and he's just gonna make one cleave at the three people standing in front of him. So the scene you walk in on is you appear like beside Macau. This thing's like maybe 15 feet away. Macau can't reach him as it's, this thing is already mid attack. Mm -hmm. So do you still want to do shatter? Well, as long as it's just hitting him. Yeah, of yeah, course. Can, yeah, yeah. Can yeah, cause I wanted to like interrupt the attack. Yeah, <laughs> so. Yeah, there. <laughs> yeah. Guardian hand grab that fucker. So yeah. you cast. You cast Shatter, and then you want the Guardian Hand to come through it. Yeah. Oh, damn. And the Shatter oh. is centered on this creature, right? Yes. Okay, so it's like chest bursting out? Or are you, so if he's right here, if it is right here, are you doing right on him, or do you want to hit it so that it like just sends him fucking flying? It sends him flying. Okay, of course. Yeah. So you cast Shatter, and you again feel another presence. Light is starting to come back. You're able to see Ditch now. Someone begins walking beside you and you see the flowing gown of Mirage and her flowing hair as she lifts up her hand and you see like the space right beside the past self of you shatters like a mirror. And then it like, as it's just about to cleave into Dara, it like turns for a brief second just you see this hand animates out, fly out and just 
boom, knock this thing, and it goes tumbling off to the side. It uses its claws to like onto the ground as it like stands back up. It now looks at a group of five characters standing in its way. All three of you and Ambrose stand beside Macau as you're looking at this creature. Its face, which was casted in shadow, slowly begins to diminish and you're, it diminishes enough to where you see your eyes reflecting back at you. <sighs> Those bodies around it begin to like disappear. The shadow begins to fade. You are back in ditch. This thing looks weakened and frightened as it's on the ground. It looks like an animal that is trying to defend itself. It's in survival mode now. It wants to live as well, but it's not strong enough to take down five people. And so now it's looking frantically. You see your own eyes darting between all of these people like it doesn't know what to do. It is overwhelmed and it is frightened. I'm going to walk over to it, non-threatening, and I'm going to kneel down in front of it. It backs up. It starts to, like, <laughs> scramble away from you. I'm sorry for what I put you through. I am. I can't, um, undo it. I'm not going to try. I'm not. It's too much, too much effort. So I'm just kind of starting from ground zero, you know? But, um, I mean, I don't know if you just, if you let me take the reins for once, or if you just stay quiet. I'll never get rid of you, that's impossible, but I can learn to live. Make a wisdom saving throw. All of you make a wisdom saving throw. Ambrose as well. Damn. No. Not 20. 13. <laughs> okay. Big money, big money. 16. You go to reach your hand to it. You hear the footsteps of your friends behind you. You feel warmth and comfort the last part of its shadow begins to fade and you see a younger scared version of yourself but as it looks up to the rest of you that sadness begins to fade all of you would outreach your hand towards this just as Macau does it just grabs its chest clenches at its heart you would feel it. We can live, bud. Finally. We're free. He takes your hand. And the rest of you all take its hand. It fades into like golden light. And as you look up, that red light is the last thing you see. And a flash of light. Macau, you can change your alignment now. Hell <laughs> and that concludes what I have for Macau's character arc. 29 sessions in. Damn. This whole thing, the climax of it, was Macau's alignment changing. Oh, Damn, that was good. <laughs> What? 
You sent a line. It was impressively good. I already sent a message about it. <laughs> Ground Zero. Do you think at all about the context of that? No. Ground Zero is commonly referred to as the grounds of disaster. Yeah. And starting from the grounds of... Starting from Ground Zero when you were just in ditch. And then, really fucking good. And also the fact that all those bodies and all those people mm-hmm. I've killed and all the destruction I've caused. That's oh. good. <laughs> it was so <laughs> fucking pink. So, Ornan, as you see this red hand, flash of light. That scene plays out. You see the red dot. It speaks to you. Light again. You're in the icy plains of Igis. It is cold. The wind bites at your skin. Immediately, you feel like your hair kind of like frost over. The war drums echo around you. These sound exactly like raiding party drums. It's very familiar to you. It brings you, brings back memories of you charging in, leading a war party onto different tribes and villages, um, plundering for food and supplies just to survive, to um, feed your family, your own clan. As the war drums sound off, you are like, in this, um, how would I describe this? Essentially, you're in this open circle, all covered in snow, but there is a tree line surrounding this large circle. And as you're like looking around, you have all your equipment, everything on you. Um, you begin to see eyes in the dark tree line looking at you, multiple, multiple eyes. One of them approaches. You see big um, footprints or (laughs) big boots begin to march on the snow. And looking up, you see yourself approach from the tree line. That berserker ax in hand, he spins it. He looks at you and he looks angry. Angry, but... He's loving it. He is thriving off of being angry. He lifts up his chin and looks down at you um, from maybe about 30 feet away, points his ax at you. As he outstretches his hands, multiple versions of yourself approach from the tree line, each one with different expressions on their face and different, Different forms of like fatigue. Um, Some appear to be like bloodied and bruised. Some appear to be in their peak, but they're all different versions of yourself. We are all you. Take away one of us and see what happens. The chain breaks. You will no longer be yourself. You need me. He like stomps on the ground and then just like charges forward, just running at you. Berserker's ax in hand, changes to a battle axe. He just leaps up, ax in hand, and just tries to cleave down. He misses right beside you, but then he just starts swiping wildly. You feel anger raiding Eddie off him. You can see the energy floating above him. What do you do? I want to try to get right up in his face. Mm-hmm. You said he's like way taller than me, so I'm like, he's, a, he's the same as you, but he just feels big. I was just trying to make you sound cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna try to get right up in his face. Sure, he is swinging wildly, but you're able to get like in his face just like a moment. You kind of like clash his arm so he can't hit you, and both of you are like face to face right now. <laughs> You think I need you? You need me. You survived with me. We are one. Why would you cast me aside? Survival and being myself is different. Aegis is the land of survival. 
I'm not there anymore. Because you ran away, you failed, and you can't get stronger. You always be this way. I can help you with me. He like pushes yourself away. He turns towards all the other Ornans who are like behind him. I can lead us to victory through pure lust of anger. My rage is what got us killed. My rage slaughtered. You, you slaughtered two hundred. I am you. I, I slaughtered two hundred of my own family. Yes. I don't want it anymore. Oh. Too bad. And he charges you again. Ah! He's gonna make an attack. Ooh. What is your attack, motherfucker? Plus six. Does uh, 15 hit you? No. No? Okay. <laughs> he swings, you're able to dodge out of the way. The ax cleaves into the snow, bits of it. Poof, kind of go flying up and he turns around. He's going to start swinging again. What are you doing? I'm going to swing back at him. I'm going to try to knock the axe out of his hand. Make an attack. If you're trying to go, if you're trying to disarm him, the AC is going to be a little bit higher. I'll just straight up attack him. Okay, go ahead. That's wow. That's a 10. 10. Uh, okay, well, you're uh, essentially attacking yeah. against yourself. So does that hit you? No? Okay. Uh, so you start swinging at him, he starts swinging again, still doesn't hit you. And you just, <clears throat> um, you kind of like clash your axes together and he's just staring at you. You uh, still feel that anger radiating, radiating off him. You don't want to know what comes after me. You don't want what's behind me. And he points and gesturing to all the other ornaments who are just like looking at you. You don't want what comes next. Maybe I want to move on. I am the barrier. I don't feel like this anymore. I am protecting you. I don't need to be protected. Make an attack with advantage. No, that was a natural 20. And then we have the dice and what did it? Oh no. <laughs> but I still got a 16 plus 6. That definitely but hits. Literally, I literally, I saw it stop, and then it was the 20, and then the red dice came and <laughs> No! Yeah! Pff, no. <laughs> I was like, I literally saw it with my own That's eyes. That's so funny. You sabotage yourself. Eye. That's so <laughs> funny. Okay, so, um, yeah, as you are crashed, you force him away and immediately bring your ax straight into his chest. You see a wound open up on him and he looks down, blood starts pouring out and he just... <sighs> we relied so much on our strength. He looks up, his emotion starts to change. That anger starts to dissipate ever so slightly. But we couldn't save anyone. We couldn't save anyone. I'm gonna try to attack you again. God! Ooh, that's gonna hit. What is the, the battle axe is a d12, right? D10. A d10. D10 plus five, what is that battle axe? You take 10 points of <laughs> psychic damage. The way that my hand, like coming here, it's like. Oh. He takes the battle axe and he cleaves into you. And as you get hit, you start to feel that anger bubble up inside you. You begin to feel your heart begin racing. I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. You suspend your own rage as you look at yourself 
who is now in a mix of anger and grief. You're staring at each other. He just looks at you, waiting for you to do something. We're better than this. We couldn't save anyone, and it's our fault! Then what do we do? If I can't protect you, who will? We have friends. Friends outside that fight alongside of us. We had family. And they're dead now. You're not listening. We did that. Friends can help us change. But through our own fucking anger. We made harsh and rapid decisions. That resulted in them getting killed. I'm gonna hit him. Okay, go ahead. 21. Or, yeah, a natural 20, actually. Yeah, that hits, definitely. (laughs) He's just looking at you. His guard is down. So it's easy for you to cleave right into him again. Take another slash, another wound. (laughs) Opens up on his chest, and he just takes another step back, and he drops the berserker (laughs) act. He just grabs at his chest. Blood now pools in his hands. And as you look down, there's blood on your hands too. (sighs) So what? Were the gods toying with us? Showing us that we weren't enough? Are they taunting us by giving us friends just to tear them away in the future? He looks at you and now he is like tears are streaming down his face. They're not the type to leave. They all have their own shit going on. We're a team. A team of strong willed individuals. If we can survive this shit together, I don't think we're going anywhere else. You want to protect them. You want to be able to save them. And that's why we learn, we grow, we adapt. That's what Iggy taught us. Are you sure we can do it again? But differently this time. Can we lead without getting everyone killed? Yes. Takes another step back before it like drops to its knees. The rest of the other like Ornans looking down upon it now. They all look back up to you. This thing is just full of grief. Its hands drop to its side given up you feel similar but different you feel that energy of giving up weigh heavily on your shoulders almost if it's like dragging you down what can I do looks up to you I'm gonna walk over I'm gonna drop to one knee We can't just give up. But it's so hard. We can't go through that again. It like frantically, like a scared person on the verge of death, grasps at your clothing and starts like climbing up you and with despair in its eyes looks up at you. I can't go through it again. It will kill me. It won't kill you. How do you know? With the group of people that we are with now, we have... We have someone to cover our backs. Dara. We had that before. What makes it different? Nothing's changed. You've not changed. 
I may have not changed now, but I'm trying. I'm, I'm willing to learn. I don't just want to go through life with just rage and making hap haphazard decisions. I want to be able to think things through, be able to see the full picture before doing something. I want to be able to think through it. I want to be able to devise a plan to make sure that no one dies. Taking over that bridge was the dumbest thing I've ever done. Just because I wanted more money. What makes this different? What is our driving force? Why? Why do we continue? And see the rest of the Ornans drop to their knees as well, looking up at you. Again, you feel that weight heavy on your shoulders. It is dragging you down and you're trying to force yourself against it. What do you do? This burden of the past still weighs heavy. Maybe we could try apologizing to what we have left. I know that- What? I know, I know- What that do? I know that they love, but then, then maybe they won't hate us. Who? Our family. Your family's gone. No, there, there are still some in schooler. I know it. I saw it with my own eyes. They loved, and then, then maybe we, can, we can go and apologize. We can make things right. If, if I prove that I can keep a group of people alive and bring them there and then maybe maybe they would be able to have my back and and tell them that i'm not a failure that maybe it's not all a lie and that maybe i can do something right you begin to see some of the ordens walk back into the forest the one that's looking up at you just starts to fade away right before your eyes. There's a few left in this field looking at you. That weight grows heavier. I need you to make a strength save. Uh, yeah, a strength saving throw. Six and plus six. It brings you to your knees, but it doesn't fully like drag you down. The rest of these ornaments begin to like walk up to you and they look down upon you each of them sharing similar facial expressions. They just look at you. <sighs> now, it's our turn. We see what you're thinking, what you're feeling. Now that anger's gone, there's no more barrier. Denial. That's what you're feeling. Another one walks up, crouches to like your eye level. You can't bargain with this one. You are still the same as like pokes you in the chest you feel yourself fall back with the weight of this this crushing burden on your chest the air is like knocked out of you and you just feel yourself sink into this cold snow before light flashes and you're back in sky Xanus. you level up to level five you no longer have to make a wisdom saving throw when you try to rage Now there's other problems you have to deal with. So we're at bargaining now. Bargaining and denial, because those are two things you specifically went directly into. <laughs> I love that. 
The smile I smooled when you started being like, but what if we can do this? What if we can do this? I'm like, bargaining, now, easy, boom. Anger, gone, immediately. That's all I needed. Wonderful. Thank you for your wonderful, wonderful hospitality. <laughs> you can send in Dara now. Congratulations. You're, you're getting past it, man. Slowly but surely, you. we're living. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. I hope your whole family has my The door's locked. Why is it locked? Yeah. Dara, the hand Hello. through the rift. That scene plays out, that red dot in the heavens above you. Light flashes once more. All around you, this is not the right music. <laughs> Pure white light surrounds this ethereal plane. You feel some sort of life energy around you. Sprouting from the ground in front of you is bloom the flower that Asunta gave you. It sprouts up, and as it begins to grow, so too does the land around it. The ground you are standing on becomes a beautiful grassy green meadow. Other flowers begin to sprout and bloom around you. You smell the fresh air of efflorescence. The white plain becomes what was once your home, what it still is your home. As bloom continues to grow, it begins to transform. It begins to um, grow legs, a torso, arms, and a head. <clears throat> vines and leaves begin to like shift and move around until they take color and form. Standing before you is Eldira. Your wife that you lost some time ago, the beautiful Miss Delph that she is. She stands before you in this green meadow cocks her head to the side, looks at you, gives you a gentle smile. Her hands kind of go down to her side. She just walks up to you and just like takes your hand and looks at you. It doesn't say anything, just kind of embraces the moment. She kind of like shakes your hand a little bit, both your hands as she's holding them. Can you feel? It's energy. Go ahead and make a nature check for me. Make my nature checks for me. Nature. Whoa. No. That's shit. Never mind. 18. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> That's really good. As you begin to like concentrate on what she's saying, you do feel energy specifically like from your feet on the ground you feel the coursing life energy that spreads all throughout the biosphere for a moment you feel one with the land around you connected to the ground you're standing on you feel strong full of life and energy, strengthened by this connection. Eldira speaks up again. Life flows through everything. You're becoming stronger, my love. Your connection with the biosphere the land around you grows and so too will this 
as she like lifts up your hand, um, bloom that same flower that you've carried with you for the past 23 days sprouts in your hand and you feel that life energy from this, this potent divine creation of the biosphere just course through you. As you let it, you begin to feel your body change. Eldira lets go of your hand and just stands back as she observes. What would be your go-to thing to wild shape into? A dire wolf. Okay, yeah. You feel this energy course through you. Your body begins to change. And all of a sudden, you become this dire wolf. And as you do, you kind of feel this primal, a different sort of connection to the land around you. You feel stronger, faster. You can feel your legs against the ground. You can feel your claws, your fangs. Your eyes are a bit more perceptive. So is your like um, hearing and smelling. You become this powerful creature that lives on the biosphere. You can now go into these forms, these beasts that Fane, the god of wildlife, has created. Eldira, what, what would you do once you transform into this direwolf? What, what does Dara do? I don't know. Um, I would probably just like, take a look around my home with these new heightened senses just to see what it feels like compared to what it has is as a human. Make a perception check, yeah. Wait, no, my perception's gone. It's like a, it's a 15? Hold on. Yes, 15. Okay. You take in everything around you, your home from a new set of eyes, from these new senses, and it's beautiful. It's different from a human to this creature. You can smell so many different things now. The flowers smell um, even more sweet. The ground feels good, like it supports you. The wind that blows through your fur just feels so cool and gentle, almost like it's wrapping you in this comforting blanket of air. You can smell um, different animals as well. You can smell the birds and the trees. You can smell um, like different like creatures, deer and elk, um, smaller creatures, maybe like squirrels, kind of like scattering around the nearby like forest. You can hear birds chirping. You can hear them moving around. You can hear the wind through the grass. It's just this heightened sense that you weren't able to get as a human. And it's it almost brings you to tears in this form. Just how pure it is. Not tainted by any sort of human senses. Being in this beast. Being connected not only to Fane, but to the land around it. It feels divine it feels right is there anything else you want to do no okay so eldira looks at you as you're gazing around with your dire wolf eyes and she would kneel down in front of you raise your chin with her hands until you like lock eyes. It is ready. Unlock its power. 
nurture it and continue to grow, my love. You feel something kind of like wrap around you. You feel Bloom's power rise. Let me pull up the actual magic item for this. Um, I forgot I had it in a different page. No. There it is. Okay. <clears throat> so the ground around you becomes charged with this life energy. You see like a sort of like barrier almost embedded in the ground surrounding you. It's a 10 foot radius centered around you. Flowers and different sorts of vegetation begin to immediately bloom. You see like this green life energy radiate from the ground around you. You feel empowered by this. You sense that bloom that is connected to you, which allows you to transform, has given you a special property to protect the area around you and those within it while you're in this form. So bloom has leveled up with you and you have now unlocked a part of its power. Bloom has five charges. You can expend one charge as a bonus action to create a magical circle in a 10 foot radius centered around you. Anyone in this circle upon activation immediately gains five temporary hit points. As a reaction, you may expend one charge to give another creature within that circle a plus two bonus to their AC until the start of their next turn. That's legit just free shield pick. Well, not free, mm-hmm. but does it recharge over time? It does recharge once uh, per dawn. All right. It charges per dawn, yeah. Yeah, can you send me that? Yes. Thank you. So you feel this power radiating from you from within bloom. You sense that divine connection to Asunta as well. You know that you're growing and you know that bloom grows along with you. You have this divine connection. Eldira takes a step back. I will always be with you. And she just, her form begins to drop and you see Bloom begin to regress like into the ground and it spreads out around you. You already felt strengthened by this circle, but now you feel a different presence. Someone else is there lending you a hand. You get the sense that everything will be all right. And no matter what happens, life continues. As this happens, you begin to feel and see way off in the distance, that darkness that you saw before. It grows stronger. It grows closer to you. You feel a bit frightened by this. Your form begins to drop as you yourself begin to feel weakened. Your mind goes blurry. Your vision goes blurry. That darkness grows closer. Wild shape would drop immediately. And again, you feel this sickness almost overtake your body for a moment before light flashes and you're back in Sky Xanus. Your vision is a little bit blurred. You feel a little lightheaded before you see in your hand Bloom 
has grown even more. It is now a strong flower. Its petals has grown even more. Now there's like a second layer to it. It almost looks like a rose in a way. You feel that it is strong and you continue to care for it. And that connection with this divine plant, if you will, there's a stronger connection. You feel its power that it's blessing you with. With that as well, Gawain would and just kind of like land either on your shoulder or your arm and just kind of like nuzzle into you. That's where we'll end off on Dara's level five. Yeah. I will send you Bloom's upgrade. That went better than I was expecting. Mm-hmm. I was expecting you're gonna be like, it's time. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, like I was fully expecting to like lose one of my senses today. I was like, oh. not yet. It's growing closer. Oh, I can tell. <laughs> this oh. one's gonna be a slow burn, buddy boy. It is time. <laughs> I'm gonna puke. All right. Eve, let me paint the scene for ya. Red hand goes through the portal. Light flashes ankle deep in this dark red liquid. The smell of blood overwhelms your senses. This small glowing light up in the dark heavens above you. You hear this wisp- these whispering words that echo out around you. Light flashes just as that um, silhouetted figure turns to look at you. And now you are somewhere you've never been before. But you know what you're looking at. You see ethos, the entire biosphere from space. You are gazing at this. You see Skaithen at the center of this biosphere. The ocean spreads out around it and then stops at almost like an invisible force field that stops the water from draining all the way out or flowing off. You see golden light stream past you begins to swirl around ethos then in two other directions from way far out coming in an angle begin to swirl around ethos then you hear a voice So, we finally get to meet Eve. A pleasure. Appearing, fading in from nothingness, just kind of floating in this um, astral abyss that is space. You immediately know who this is, even though you've never seen this person before. Delias. Barash stands in front of you. He wears like a simple uh, white linen button shirt, um, simple like black cloth pants, uh, no shoes on. He kind of has his pants rolled up a bit. He has like short, um, like wavy brown hair, um, very simple features for a human, um, tan skin, um, he just appears in front of you. You already know who I am, don't you? <laughs> I never thought we would be meeting like this or at all. <laughs> I had to make my presence known at some point. You and I are uh, the same. And he, like, 
shifts his shoulder and you can see the same gear tattoos just up here all along like the sleeve of his arm up like his collarbone and then he like um shows like his chest a bit and you can see the gear cogs on there as well they move on his skin he just smiles he look up to you Well, you know I've got plenty of questions. Oh, I do. <laughs> but, um... You, you know you're special, right? I'm not entirely sure how. He walks over to you and just, like, takes his hand and gently, like, brushes up your arm, gesturing to, like, your, the cogs. They're not moving yet. They will one day. Maybe even today. Oh. Do you feel like you're ready, Mirage? Um, to take the next step? Yes. Do you want to? I... Oh. This can be a heavy burden for someone. There are... It's a lot. For someone like me, it was fine. I was always a, a loner. Didn't really have many friends, much family, so I was fine with this burden. This task gave me purpose beyond mortal connections. And I know that might sound a bit too far gone, if you will, but that's just who I was. I liked doing what I did, maintaining the balance, keeping ethos and the mortals that walk upon it in check. You did something very similar for quite a while. Dion led you, didn't he? He did, yes. So you already have a taste of what it was like to be me. But now, I can feel it. He like, touches like, where your heart is. You are just like it. You feel your cold machine heart begin to whir and beat. Vroom, 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 vroom. He fades away, and you begin to feel that heartbeat coming from Ethos. You begin to see Ethos for what it truly is. You see the cogs, the gears begin to turn. Ethos is a machine. It is a living biological machine. You feel almost exactly what it feels. In like a moment, you get flashbacks of how Ethos was created through the harmonizing like a sword being forged. It was destroyed and built and destroyed and built back up, layers upon layers upon layers of creation until it is what it is now. You feel very much connected to it as you have been built up and destroyed and built up and destroyed and built up again. Your heart and ethos beat as one. You feel 
the presence of the gods. They surround Ethos. You see them appear, their hands all stretched out to their side, forming a circle around the biosphere. You feel them as gears themselves. They're just larger cogs to this engine. They are what keep it going, keep it powered, keep it moving, keep it balanced. You feel a connection to them as well. And then you see them. The first three. Ethos begins to fade out in the distance, almost as if you're shunted back even farther out into space. You see the golden light, the stream of starry golden light pour out from three sources that surround Ethos. There are three more biospheres and each one above it, you see the massive cosmic entities that are the blooming gods, the Scion, the God of light, the God of the day, Goal, his brother created through shadow, the God of night, the God of darkness. And then the third, you see what appears to be a cosmic tree, its branches holding up life itself, its roots buried deep to all three of these biospheres, holding them up, giving them the ground they need to live on. You feel its roots connected to you as well. You feel yourself holding up balance itself. You feel the eyes gaze upon you as they speak. You hear th three different voices, the Scion, Gol, and Atakun, but they speak as one. It is a godly, divine voice unlike anything you've ever heard. It's overpowering. It almost destroys all of your senses. They not only speak to you, but they just envelop like your body itself. Evelina, Kas is it Kasyanov? Yes. Kasyanov, you are special to us. You are the living, living, breathing, incarnation of our creation. You represent the inner machinations of ethos itself. You hold balance in your hands. You are the guide to mortals. You guide their balance. You are the scale. You get to determine whether things stay in balance or the scales tip. You will get to see how ethos changes in the near future. You already know of whom disrupts this balance. You know what he is capable of. We ask of you, Eve, will you let us guide you? Will you let us help you so that you may keep ethos in balance? Will you help the machine continue so that our creator may return one day. 
the rift is broken. Fragments scattered all across Ethos. We ask of you to help repair the doorway for our creator to return. Do you accept? You know, I still just like completely consumed with like Make a wisdom saving throw for me. Okay. Just a... You still do feel overwhelmed because you are gazing upon the three pillars of life. These things are beyond ancient. They were here before all of this was created. And them speaking to you is a miracle that you just haven't exploded. So it is very overwhelming. You still feel like these beings have like a hold on you. It's not malevolent. Mm -hmm. But that's their only way to connect with you, to contact you. But to you, it is just like a rush. It's overstimulating. Your brain feels like it's about ready to erupt, but you're still holding on. Before, before I accept, what can you tell me about this creator? His name is Vasilius. Though many mortals know him as the architect, he is our creator. He created us so that we may build this machine that is ethos. We harvest energy from our temples siphoning the life energy that is created through mortals and their deaths. That life energy is what powers the rift, the doorway to unknown territories, unknown dimensions, infinite possibilities, infinite realities. Our creator has given us purpose and a life. You are here because of him. We all have a purpose. Ethos was made to produce life energy for Vasilius. Yes, and our temples use that energy. This is our circle of life. The mortals die, their life energy is released, and we collect it, store it until we are ready to open the doorway. How much longer or how much more energy is required? We are trying to open the door, but we fear our creator will not be able to make it through for the rift. It is shattered, broken. Only the mortals can collect the pieces that have been broken, which is why we call upon you. You are ready 
Eve, but only if you accept. If you do not, we fear that ethos, the machine itself, may be damaged. We understand this is a lot, too much for a mortal mind to handle. If you decline, there will be no ill will. All my life I've been working towards one goal, even to the point where I threw away what I believed to be my whole world. Which is why we trust in you. You have shown your devotion and loyalty to the biosphere. You have tossed aside the one thing you truly loved with every fiber of your being down to the very soul. All for keeping ethos alive. You followed De Young. You did his bidding. And now the power above him calls to you. Your child breathes. We do not know the end of ethos, but as long as you are alive, Evelina, Evelina Kasyanov. You can see to it that ethos will continue to work, to breathe, to live. When you said my child breathes, may you tell me who you're referring to? The planet the biosphere, or Sasha. The one you truly love. We feel his heartbeat. Come. And you see the golden light begin to reach out towards you until a thin strand like reaches out and like, um, golden like string fingertips like unravel and like offer you its hand i've made an awful choice if i were to turn back now i would have done all that for nothing and there are people i want to protect and to realize the kind of world Sasha always dreamt of. We know not of the vision you were given, but we feel what you feel. Live, Evelina. Assure that that vision does not come to pass. Your son will appear in due time. Do you wish to feel his heartbeat? I do. That light extends further to you. 
feel what we feel, Evelina. Understand. Take their hand. As you take the hand, immediately this rush of energy just <sighs> takes over your entire body. And it's so hard to stay present in your own mortal body. Go ahead and make a charisma saving throw. There you go. <laughs> sure. As you use restore balance, as your hand is like um, touching these light strings, you feel the cogs on your skin. Go ahead and roll with advantage this time. easy your whole body starts to like seize up with this course of just raw energy just engulfing you then you hear a voice pierce through it's the same blooming gods focus evelina hear feel his heartbeat you begin to focus you focus hard, you begin to see memories of Sasha, all the good times you had with him before that um, doomed day. And you feel it finally. You feel that heartbeat connect with yours. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> you feel as if you are embracing your boy, you feel his presence, that connection to him. He still lives. That connection finally fades and you're just left with that feeling of comfort you still feel the echoes of his heartbeat within you And we're just kind of like alone in this space void. I try to recall the feeling. This is it like fleeting right now? Or yeah. I want to try to latch onto that feeling. Sure. Make me. Hmm. Make me, yeah, make me perception check. Sure. Okay. Or I'll accept, I'll accept insight as well. 15. It's good enough. You still feel it. You hold on to it. And as you begin to just like really concentrate on just keeping that feeling with you, you begin to feel that sur uh, surge of power. It's less than that extreme course of energy flowing through you, but you really want to feel it again, and you try to just get it back. You focus, and you focus, and you focus, and you feel a surge of energy rushing from within you, 
your heartbeat <laughs> running even faster, making your body stronger. This engine makes you powerful. Just like ethos powers the rift, your heart powers you. And as it, you just surge, energy surges from you, this golden light. And you see a brief, brief silhouette of your sun as that golden light kind of like forms around this ghostly invisible body that is Sasha. And for a moment you see this facade or this visage of your son. And there's a small like golden light placed where his heart is and it beats and it flashes with light just like his heartbeat. Your heart sinks with this light your cogs begin to glow and move. That visage finally would, as that surge of energy dissipates, but you still feel that heartbeat and that golden light remains there in sync with your heart. It remains. <laughs> Will you? Allow us to guide you so that we may continue to feel as you feel now. I'm ready. You always were. And with that, you would see all this begin to, um, again, like you're pulled back, you would reach the edge of this known universe. Stars speckle the black abyss of this space. You see the four dots now, ethos in the center and the three other biospheres surrounding it, all in like a triangle around it. That grows smaller and smaller until you reach the very edge. And there are three biospheres around. Ethos. Yes, like it, there's like it's like in a triangular formation with ethos at the very center. If okay. that makes sense. Yeah. You are thrusted to the edge of this known universe, and as you like turn around, you would see you have reached some sort of like force field. You just is there's like this rippling energy, and as you go and like look at it. Outside of this force field, there is nothing. You are staring directly into the void. Nothingness. And as you do, light <sighs> immediately floods your vision and you are back in Sky Xanus. You feel stronger. You feel a deeper connection to not only this biosphere, but to the other ones. You feel a deeper connection to aware, the magic born God. Feel a deeper connection within yourself. Everything around you feels more vibrant and clear. You understand now. You understand your purpose. You understand the biosphere's purpose. And with that, I'll message everyone to come back. Light flashes. All five of you are back in Sky Exodus immediately where you were. 
the first thing you would see is that red hand. That shattering sound was the rift. And the hand falls out of the sky. You hear as it falls and collides with the ground. The rift is closed. It's fucking hand? What the fuck? The second thing, you hear the terrified, labored breathing of your favorite Taylor Tiefling. Big, big eyes, bloodshot, looking right at you. He's here. He's here for me. What? You see, almost trying to like rip itself away, is this black shadow that just. And it's just trying to like claw out of Ambrose and he's just <laughs> like like panic attack right now. He on? drops to the ground. He's clutching his chest and just looking directly at the rift. He's here. He's here. He's, he's here for me. You see his, he's, his head starts like shaking and you uh, hear the black shadowed figure Jean just oh, He can't return! Not now! Um... What? <laughs> Look, it's closed. Look, it's closed. It's not open. It's fucking hands up. It's on the ground. It's closed. I saw. I saw. He's not here. I saw further. What do you mean? What? What? What is going on? Broken. It's broken. Wherever he came from is gone. Broken. Do you want to get inside? Can you get inside? Inside. Now. I grab it inside. I'm like, come on, come on, come on. Let's go. <laughs> okay, maybe not. He just he he just is dead weight right now. Okay. He is he is his eyes are locked on the rift and this shadow, which is not like a physical form, but like a spirit, you see just like echoes of it. Almost like it's it, it's shadow itself is like echoing as it's moving. It's it like so fast. It is trying so hard to detach itself from what it is now physically latched onto, which is Ambrose. It is trying trying, but it cannot. Every once in a while, Ambrose's voice turns into Jean's, this corrupted, broken version of Jean. But yeah, you're able to drag Ambrose if you want to. Yeah, we'll get, to yeah. get him into the, where the, the end was. Sure. Nobody, absolutely nobody, even, right. you do not draw as anyone's just... attention. They are all fixated upon what they just saw. It's been 100 years since they've seen their creator, and now they've caught a glimpse of it before it was ripped away from them. Its hand severed. They are beyond fixated. Nothing can draw their attention away. So you bust into the inn, the door breaks open, the innkeeper's not even there. What are you guys doing? Get him in a chair. Open the chair, the room key, and then just. Up to the room. Okay, to the room. Oh, to the room. Oh, to the room. Oh, to the room. Guys, we went to the cavern, didn't we? No, the inn. Oh, cool. Yeah. Up to the room. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. I'll guide him over to where our room is. Yeah, you guide him over to the room and sit him down. And you just. <laughs> he's just looking around at everything, not focused on you. It almost seems like he can't hear you. Just. <laughs> Hey, hey, John! Hey! Shadow. We, the rift is closed. Make a persuasion check. Can you join me? Guys. Ornan didn't speak. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, all, he's been agreeing with you the whole time. Ornan helped you into the room. You're the one trying to get John. You got John's attention. You're the ah. only one who got John's attention. God damn it. 
I offer you guidance. I guidance. That's a D4? Bamf. Yeah, D4. A D4. D4. Thank you. I'll say, Ornan, you can go ahead and make a strength check to try to restrain uh, Ambrose down in a comforting manner. Unless you don't want to. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, I'm still <laughs> 22. 22. Okay. Ambrose is calming down as you're kind of like trying to keep him there. You know, you're you're using your big orc muscle or half orc muscles to keep him there. And so I'm like by restraining him, it's it's uh it's comforting him, I guess. He's he's not allowed to like compression. Yeah, 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 compression, yeah, yeah, compression. yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Autism, bam, bam. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so Jean whips his shadowy head. Now you see like Ambrose's head followed by Jean's black shadowy spectral head. Just <clears throat> look at you, and you. It's closed. The rift is closed. What that whatever's freaking you around in now is closed. It's fine. It's okay. Then his head fell off! It's good! Our home is broken. I must return. Return me to him! Okay. To, to, to to my life. Life. Sigh. Sigh. Okay. We must okay. become one! Okay. Or else the cycle fails! Okay. Exandria will fall forever! Okay. Fate must continue. I cannot see. I am blind. You don't understand what it's like to not see further beyond. Okay. Okay. Then, then we'll, we'll get on it. We're helping. Uh, this, this is apparently a lot bigger of a deal than we thought. If that is doing this and that's tied, that that's a that's a big deal, right, gang? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Destroyed my home. Okay. okay. Then we'll we'll help you. We'll, we'll continue helping you. We'll, we'll we'll figure it out. Persuasion checks, both of you. Twenty-one. Guys, just show up too. There you go. For both of us. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, no. Sorry. Funny. Hell yeah. A 17. Oh, yeah. Okay. These words resonate with him. He believes you. Please. Find them. I cannot do much. I can provide for this one. But that is all. Okay. We, we understand. I feel them here, but that is all. I do not know where. Just here in this world? Just somewhere here? Yes. Just up there. Anything. Okay. Is um, there anything that... What do you, like, what do you know about Leviathan? Do, where do you think that he would go? Where would he go? Or sigh. Or what, what kind? What kind of men are they? Ambrose immediately, both hands shoot out like onto your shoulders. Immediately, you are granted a vision. <laughs> you see Leviathan for what he was in Exandria, a water genasi cleric clothing that mace in his hand, and then you see a spectral version of Psy floating alongside someone's body. Okay. You are thrusted back out immediately. This is the first time you've ever seen a vision that wasn't granted to you by some divine force. It was like shoved in there. Yes. Oh. Whatever this thing is, you immediately have the feeling that this thing is supposed to be way more powerful than what it is right now. Crazy. <laughs> Where? Oh, no. After you are granted that vision, Ambrose immediately no. passes out. Jean, gone. Oh, he fuck. used the last bit of his force to grant you the vision to show you what you were, who you were looking for. What did you see? 
a, a green fuck, um, and then looked. An ogre? No. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, the was that both of us? Yes. Yeah, both, oh, fuck. It was a, a green guy, yeah, but not I like this, like, like, it was more of like a blue tailed. He had like pointed ears that looked kind of webbed. Oh, no, it was like water, did I see? And, uh, he had a kind of, kind of, um, holy. He looked holy. Cleric. Cleric. He looked, like a priest. he looked like a priest guy. Yes, mace. And he had a mace, and 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 then there was another oh, thing where guy. there was a guy that spectral. looked kind of like shot sort of, and then there Very was another guy that was like a spectral floaty man. Yes. Um, and a spectral floaty man. Uh, all right. So where 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 were the floaty well, man? There's go? a lot of places. In it. There's the, there's the whole weird. Like the, the, the because we don't we don't know what kind of man he is. We don't know where the fuck he would go. He, Seems like a fighting guy. He's got a mace. That's pretty fucking crazy for a for a priest man. Yeah. Raj, okay, fair. Yeah. What what? The... <laughs> I mean, if if he genuinely seems like a fighting man, there's a very common place for the holy warriors. But... Oh God. Uh, no. uh, 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 you, uh, 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 oh, Celia. No. With the the mild shit and the yeah, that's and the like, on, I hope <laughs> like the, the madness guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really fucking hope. <laughs> I don't want the goddamn. Say. I don't need the okay. god of madness life. Like, I mean, ironically, I do okay. need to go that way. Okay, for for what? what? For why? My magic item. Oh, from, that's right. Fancy pants, the, the goblin. The, the, okay, from that fuck time. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, I guess we're going Ocel- on a trip. I think Ocelia might it's be not, our. So uh... yeah, I, don't, I, don't. I don't want to go. I have a phone. It's very like. Uh... You, you can yeah. probably get in contact with your guy though. Yeah. Yeah. No, it could be beneficial. There's chances he should still be up there. Connection. Connection. Possible. I don't have connection. You the magic item. You the. It's not it, Ocelia. It's on the way. But it's a. It's a. Motivator. Don't you want to get uh, another magic item? Hmm. I mean, it'd be handy, but I. We got God, two. I hope I don't have to use it. We got to replace your snake. There is a difference between resurrection and Bite. snake. But I mean, I hey, still cool. This is so okay. So. Are we going now? What, what do we do? Well, do you have to wait for Mr. Sleepy Pants to fucking wake up? Yeah. As you guys <laughs> are discussing all of this, everything has been silent thus far until you begin to hear heavy, like staggered footsteps coming into the inn. <laughs> that is the only sound you hear. I, I run out of the room. I am going to see because obviously something's wrong. So if someone's not looking up at the fucking time, we'll lose him. Yeah. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go check. I would also go investigate. Armed, but yeah, are obviously armed. I stare at Ambrose for a minute. I check his pulse. Make sure he's still breathing. <laughs> he's still alive. Does he have a pulse? And does he? I think I'll post up by Ambrose's corpse as well. <laughs> just, just watch, just does watch, dog. Does he have a pulse? Okay, are are you are you staying? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll see if I'm needed, and then if not, I'll I'll come back. And call for me. Okay. Do not hesitate. Okay. You got it, ma'am. And then I will also look it. As so, who's, who's all going that? out? I burst out of the room first. Three. Okay. As all three of you bust out, or you would see this first, but then the rest of you, you see. I think only Macau would recognize this person. A tiefling, purple skin, spiky black hair that falls over her ears in the bridge of her nose, wears a black tattered robe. She seems to be covered in blood. Um, she used to wear a mask over her mouth. Now she doesn't. Cold, thin, black eyes. Perseverance. From the centers of absolution and ditch. Staggers, bloodied, beaten, into the tavern. 
<laughs> Please. I'm so scared. I don't. Eyes immediately glow blue. So does her mouth. You vile insects. You dare defy me. How dare you. You've ruined my plans time and time again. You think you can stop me from attaining apotheosis? I have spent countless days and nights weaving the threads of destiny to bring about my reign. Now you insolent fools dare to disrupt it. The first time was amusing, but now you shall rue the day you crossed me, risk seekers! You are but mere mortals. I have the power of the gods. Enjoy the time you have left. I will enjoy watching your corpses writhe as the red Maya takes you. Your flesh will be consumed by the god of madness himself. <laughs> My time has come, and yours will end. Malauris Zaphelion! You see, like, the roof just poof, explode open, coming fuck? from way, way across the region from Lothmanger itself. Four, three, three lights. Three beams of light, iridescent, exactly looking like a wear, but a pure beam just blah, 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 poof, straight up into the heavens. And then they bend at a cosmic angle, just going way overhead into the heavens. It stretches and stretches and stretches like a slinky, just <sighs> lands in three different directions. <sighs> The wall will crumble, and the Mirefold will take over Skaven. <sighs> Beam of light <sighs> surrounds Perseverance <sighs> and lifts up. You see that blue light just <sighs> escape her. It bends, and that light <sighs> fades away. Perseverance drops to her knees. <sighs> I don't... I don't want to go. Dara. Dara! What do you expect me to do? She's already gone. I think, I think we need to go now. Yep. Where do you want to go? You want to go to a crumbling wall and die first? Wanna go fight a god? <laughs> Mirage, you are not a part of this, but you hear those voices into your head again. Evelina, we now guide you. Travel towards Ocelia. Along the way, you will come across a town. Someone is there disrupting the balance. Powerful artifact lies there. They seek to obtain it for Ambrister. You cannot let this happen. You see that light, the strands of light, different from what you saw in your vision, but similar to what you saw almost about a month ago. That strand of light that once led you to Macau's room now arcs out of this building and away, going northeastern. As it like flows out, it fades away. They have directed you to your next task. 
You see a purple tiefling lying on the ground, just feet away from the door that you bursted into. There's a roof, Fox. Yeah. Cool. Oh, it's exploding! Make sure. <laughs> I need to make sure. Is it, was it fucked in Ambrose's room, or just like in the corridor? Like how just, fucked is just, fucked? Just kind of like the corridor oh, okay. itself. Just, just a little fucked. Hey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wood splinters everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yes, my good sir. I would like to go check the pulse for the teeth. Make a medicine check. I'm not good at medicine, but you know, it, it's something. It's you don't seem to feel a pulse. I will go over and check now that the one is going. That is it. <laughs> Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> but the please. Hold on. Oh okay. shit, right. I'm in the process of leveling. Hey, we we can try to Hold we, on. We can try I'm something, trying. right? <laughs> Fifteen. It's very faint, very weak. There's a pulse there. I can. It's gonna hurt. <clears throat> I need a knife. I will, I will take out my serpentine dagger and hand it to you. You've got to set your hand, cut out the tongue. You have to. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> go over, and I'll rub around. And I- May the gods guide you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dexterity check. <laughs> and I'm just cackling as I, as I cut out the spot where the mark is. Yep. Dexterity check. Uh, are you proficient in daggers? Um, I don't know if that would count as a weapon. I actually, I don't know. I have no um, idea. Simple weapons and short swords. Yes. Daggers are simple weapons, yeah, okay, so, so with proficiency. Okay. Dexterity plus proficiency. And you have guidance. <laughs> she doesn't need a tongue. The suspense. 13. Your proficiency did go up. Yeah, 13. <laughs> 13 was the DC that I set in my head. It's only because my proficiency bonus went up. So, you are cackling as you open her mouth, Just like take out her tongue, terrible. and you see that symbol on her tongue, and you cut it out. Okay, and... <laughs> You cut. <laughs> this is my one job. Let me do it. Let the man do his work. And I will use a first level uh, spell uh, to cast uh, Cure Wounds. You're going to need to apply it on my You apply Cure Wounds, sir? Yes. Okay. Uh, I have to double check what it is now because it might have changed. <laughs> I don't think it did. No, it did not. So, that is just... <laughs> that's not a D. <laughs> Dang. Uh, 12. HP. Restored. She's like, collapsed face down on the ground and you just hear... <gasps> boom! And she just like, pushes herself up with so much force and just... <gasps> I'm sorry. Hey, I'm sorry. We got it. Everster's not involved anymore. We're good. You're free. You're okay. You are untethered. Not the time. <laughs> Macau, what the hell? Hi. You're okay. You were cursed. We'll call it. I know, it'll get better with time. We had to cut a hole in your tongue. It was the only way. <laughs> Did you look. cut it out or just cut a hole in it? I cut it out. I yeah. didn't cut like a hole. I okay. just dug yeah. around. Like what I did with the other guy. Did um, you cut this? Okay, let me clarify. 
cut symbol out or cut tongue out? Symbol. I think okay, I basically okay. do I do like a cone to get the whole shape out. Okay. So there's a, a, a there's a dent, not a hole, but there's a dent. Understand. I'll say with cure wounds, if it was just a hole, that would have been so yeah. she can talk. I yeah. thought oh, you no, cut no, no, whole no. tongue out. I was like, yeah, <laughs> she can't talk. Also, the tongue is very good at healing itself. So this is also true. Could the can the tongue actually like he- yes. restore? Oh, absolutely. Like if you get a split tongue, like if you cut, you have this the procedure done to like split your tongue and have a split tongue. If you uh, if you don't have it sewn and separated long enough, over time it will start to seal itself back together. Yep, it's super neat. They I have, just they, learned something they have new. To, like if you want that to stay for the rest of your life, they have to either like cauterize it or they have to do like other specific stuff with the procedure to make sure they remain split tongue. Okay, cool. Good. So, okay, yes. Like how I was born that way. You cut this f- flappy tongue symbol out cool. and then tongue. Dara, you tongue cast tongue. a cure wounds. She immediately wakes up, is freaking out, but then she like uncovers her mouth, realizing that she can speak without anything <sighs> controlling or dictating what she can or cannot say. <sighs> Where am I? You're in Sky Xanus. I was dead. I was hey, ditch. Hey, hey. I was just there. Hey. Yep. It's okay. You were taken over by a madman. That Fucking bastard! <laughs> Jin, Ilon, Quarith, fuck, fuck! I tried. You did everything you could. They're gone. They're gone. I tried. I tried. I tried. What happened? I failed. I had one fucking job. Hey, we all fail sometimes. It's gonna be okay. I said, well, <laughs> Go ahead and roll a persuasion check to try to calm her down. Does it give an advantage? You, you can either give an advantage or you can try to macau your way out of this one. Shit. <laughs> so should we both just. No, you do it. You're gonna work better luck than me. <laughs> okay. Well, you still have the guidance. <laughs> uh oh. Please. Please. What? <laughs> Why? <laughs> what the fuck? Wait. Okay. Um. There's a lot of <laughs> going on today. No. God damn it, guys. Okay. So. Um. <laughs> I, I can't. I, I couldn't let them pa- pa- pass on. I, 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 she tried so hard. And, and she just... She, I couldn't do it. It was so weak. All we wanted to do was help. We just wanted to help. And that's okay. Why were we punished this way? We're Why? all being punished right now. Fuck you, Ilya. Fuck the gods. Fuck everything. Hey. You want revenge? You. You. I know you. You were there. I was. Yeah. (laughs) Hey. Not the time. We also hate that fuck. The whole the whole reason, actually, that I was involved with your guys' stuff is because we were getting fucked over by Strazyank, the guy that runs the edge, and so we were trying to deal with that so that we could fuck over him. Fuck that you green guys. little shit. If it wasn't for him, we would have been okay. Yeah, 100%. He's a shit. I don't, what, do I, what do I do? I, I, you want... I don't know. What do you want to do? Do you want to go be free? Do you want to make, do make a difference now? Tried already. She just like stands and up you and you see she's like so chance. woozy right now. She's just like lack of oxygen and just panic has overwhelmed every sense. It's almost like she doesn't perceive you trying to help her. She views everything as evil and trying and trying to attack her. That's yeah. That is so 
And so right now, even her whole, her body is against her. Nothing, nothing seems to be allying with her. Not even her mind, her heart, her body, nothing. Yeah. Everything is against her right now. That is where she's at. You've been given a second chance. Sit down for a moment. Breathe. You can do another persuasion check. Have advantage? No. But I was helping! Oh. <laughs> Shut up! I did! I did! For me with the footage! I did it! I know you did, but he's the one trying to talk right now. You already tried. No, you failed. No. I'm giving Dara one last chance to try to calm her down. Yeah, I want to fucking do anything and the gods have dictated it. It's a seven! <laughs> you see her frantically like look around the room, look at all you. I'm sorry. It's I'm sorry. Fine. And she turns yeah, around no, 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 no. and oof, gone. Okay. Stay alive. Her. Fuck this. I think. Been there. It is time to leave. You. Yeah. yeah. We need to. As much as I would love to wait for Ambrose to come to consciousness, fucking grab him and go. That's we need fine. to get the fuck out of Lost. We here. need to leave. At least. Where did you plan to go? Ocelia. Ocelia. There is someone seeking an artifact there. Fuck. <laughs> you really want to go to the land of the mad god? To stop Amber Star from getting another artifact? Another vesiculum? Yes. <gasps> this is so fucking stupid. <laughs> Everything I do to fight disease and now I go to the heart of it. <laughs> this is fucking ridiculous! Okay, okay. Well, I'm heading there. Okay. Yeah. You all have this... When you look at Mirage, it almost seems like she's empowered. Her head's Fuck on yeah. straight. Her heart is clear. Fuck yeah! She seems to be taking charge, and there's this aura about her that spews out just pure, not even divine or life energy, just raw power. Fuck yeah. Raw, intense energy. Mama Mirage, she's bad. <sighs> we head out now. Pack your things. Yes, ma'am. All right, Ambrose. Y'all ready to go fucking insane? Here, cross. We I'm need power. I'm just fucking... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want her holy cross. This isn't. Who holy. even is Jesus? This this is a fucking Jesus stand user. <laughs> <laughs> He's a stand user. It's just easy. I'll, ca I'll user. just carry it. It will be fine. <laughs> I'm just saying in case something else happens. I summon the fated future. <laughs> 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 Your next line is, oh wait, you're dead. <laughs> I walk upstairs and I go and grab As it was foretold. <laughs> As it always will be. Oh, <laughs> that's the fucking That's what they should say, actually. As it always will be. Or so shall it always be. Yeah, you like walk up <laughs> as it was. <laughs> so shall it always be. Yeah. Anyways. I'm walking upstairs and drink that for us. I'm just like, here I am. Okay. I drop myself. I was gonna fucking stay. Hand over my uh, heart and just my staff. smile gently. Be not certain of my staff. All right. The one you got Good. fucking commissioned. Yeah, we're fucking leaving. Just, oh, you're so. I don't. I can't use the sword. I have to sword and change it. But. I don't suppose that if we go to the place where I was being commissioned from, they maybe got a done early rush order. We can go check. Let's go check. Yeah, we can check where the blacksmith is currently standing in the middle of the town, staring out in horror at the fact that their god just fucking got their hand cut off. <laughs> okay, so maybe God will lend us a hand Shut and it will be done. Oh my god. He already I'll, gave I'll us some, a hand. Yeah. Take some psychic. Roll 1d4 for that one. All right. Some higher force just said, 
Send me back to space after that. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I blow up! My health. It's okay, I'll do it later. I'll... I also haven't done that yet. Same. I'm still fucking working. I, I adjusted the most important things, my proficiency bonus and my damage. No, never mind, it did go up, we're good. Okay, I have to do... It did it already, it for me. Okay, let's... Also, I have three level spell slots. I don't have three level spells. <laughs> you can cast lower level spells at third level, though. Yep, that's the only thing I can use it for. I Huzzah! can't have third level spells yet. Holy warrior of the land! God damn it. All right, so you guys are leaving the inn. What are you doing? Cry. Go to a place where staff hopefully yes. is done. not done. <laughs> Understood. As you walk through Sky Xanus, all eyes still rest on the rift. It's almost like it's you're frozen in time right now. People barely seem like they're even breathing. Most people's mouths are just open, yeah. jaws like slack, looking straight up at the rift. Um, as you continue to walk through Sky Xanus towards the direction of the blacksmith, some people finally snap out of their trance and begin to like look around, breathe again. Life seems to slowly start coming back to Sky Xanus, but it's not in, in the same um, vibe as it was before. For what was once a happy, jovial town that was Sky Xanus on um, the last departure, now it is an eerie quiet that has been casted over this town. People are murmuring to each other. What was that? What did we just see? Was that the architect? What happened to his hand? Is he dead? The rift, cut him off. What is the rift? What happened? Portal? Light, did you see that light? I thought I was I thought I thought was seeing things. What was all that? I heard yelling, did you hear yelling? Just all of this whispers and murmuring. Finally, you would make your way to the blacksmith um, who has is like sitting down on an anvil. Uh, he seems to be like covered in soot and he's just like, thousand yard stare at the ground. Excuse me, sir. I hate to interrupt your moment of reflection in this dire time of what in the fuck is happening. <sighs> but I have to bother you. <clears throat> he stands up. <clears throat> of course. I need a quarter staff. can be done. I have to go fight what is happening here. He just... What do you mean? I wish I knew. But I'm involved. Fuck <clears throat> the flux my moves. That, I don't even know if that's connected. Fuck episode Curie. That too. I would say I'm surprised, but after that, I don't think anything can top it. No, I don't you were all surprised. spoken to by Mother Serpent. You specifically. Yeah. Yeah. There is something special about you. I wish you all the luck in whatever you have to go fight. Thank you. Thank you. I can get you this core staff. Thank you. And he... Um, how do you describe your quarterstaff? Because oh, we can oh. flip flop the the long sword into a, a quarterstaff. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just we'll just make if you want the quarterstaff, we'll just say he has an already designed quarterstaff, and he just lets you have that instead of the long sword. Yeah. 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 Uh, 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 no, that's the wrong character. That, that, hello, Darren. Uh, horn. Yeah. Staff. Uh, big branch. Okay. Big branch! The Lord uh, it's got some carvings in it, but that's actually not there because it's something I'm gonna do. Wonderful. So it's just a big fucking stick. It's it's a big stick, but what this blacksmith has done is it's carved it to where your hand rests um, comfortably and gently um, like on its shaft and you can use it either like two hands or one handed. There's, um, it, it's designed in a way where it very much suits you as a druid. Sweet. Um, but yeah, he 
like opens up this case, hands you this quarter staff, and then just bids you all farewell and wishes you good luck. Thank you. Remember us. Take care of yourself. If you can, try to bring some order to the town. Understood. Please. I will tell the Reeve that, and um, thank you, Rift Seekers. You've brought a new light to Sky Xanus. And I hope we are, I hope that I can return and check in on you guys. We hope so as well. And he just puts his hand over his heart and just bows deeply. May Mother Serpent watch over you to whatever land you travel to. And may she watch over your town. Okay. And I'm gonna look up at the Mother Serpent right now. Her head slowly gazes towards you, and as you look up, you f- don't see her, but you feel her bow in acknowledgement. Bow as if she has just been, as she's been in the presence of a higher power. Holy fuck! What the fuck is going on? She understands and feels what you felt. Spelling awakening! This ancient awakening. creature. <laughs> Arise! No, just go, God Arise. damn it! Awakening. Thank you. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> wake me up! No. Wake me up inside! I can't wake up! I can't wake up inside! That's wrong on the different pages. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Mirage, as you gaze into where this light was guiding you, you turn your head and you can feel that shard orbiting around your head. Wherever you plan on going, there's something calling you. The shard feels it. What the fuck? Damn. Dude. 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 Hey, welcome to the midpoint of your character arc. (laughs) (laughs) We've arrived! I can bing, 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 or bing, 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 bing. You're, you're like still in the stages, so I, you know. No, I haven't touched yet. I'm doing two stages at once. Sonar. I'm just going to be like, it's like a fucking radar, dude. Yeah. I like being off the radar. Those are great guys. I can lead the way to Acelia. By all means. I mean, didn't you say that? Making sure I understand her. Our actual first pit stop is not Ocelia. Correct. Okay. The There's voices, the you voices told, told the Mirage town. that there is a town that someone is disrupting, trying to find an artifact for Ambrister Kiori. Okay. Okay. Make an insight check. No! Right. <laughs> Rena. Uh, restore balance. Sure. Yeah. That was a nat fucking You mm. all see it as Mirage is oh, stalwartly gazing into the distance. The gears on her skin, the tattoos, the like teal colored cogs glow and shut the fuck up. Start turning. Go ahead and roll again. What? Well. Well. A nine plus whatever. Insight? Yeah. Have the insight though? Okay, 10. 10 is, that is what you needed. It wasn't a super high roll. Um, the light that you saw from Lothmanger that arced over you and landed in, in the way off distance, that's where you were assuming the voice was talking about. That's where the light is guiding you. So something from Lothmanger is now in this town searching for an artifact for Amberster Kiori. That is the direction the voices were guiding you to. That's the tattoo's fucking move. And the cop just goes, oh! (laughs) Just, oh! 
I'm just We got a like... lot of catching up to do. Okay! But for now, I know the way to the small town. Okay! Let's just say I have a special, unique connection. Okay! Sure! Things. You know what? Sure. At this point, fuck yeah! Okay! Sure! Pretty cool, huh? You fucking make his up. Yeah, what the fuck? Morning is really just like. Fuck. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, <laughs> onward. 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 <laughs> Moses parted the Red Sea. Yes. Moses parts the Red Sea with a fucking Beyblade. Part the Red Mire. Part the Mire. Ah, that actually was hard. Hell yeah. All right. <laughs> you guys begin making your way towards Ocelia. Okay. Mirage, you are in front of the group leading them to this next stop. <laughs> This force guides you. With each step, you feel like you are um, <laughs> taking the next step in growing yourself. With the things you were shown, with what you felt, that cold metal heart of yours seems to be growing warmer. You are understanding yourself and your purpose. You walk confidently. Macau, as you begin to walk, in like the back of your mind, you hear chains. You feel your ankles heavy. But as you see your friends around you and you begin moving with them, you hear those chains snap. The shackles that bound you to your past begin to break off. They break away. You feel lighter. You feel confident going forward that these people around you are here to help you and to make you a better person. Ornan, as you continue walking, you still feel that heavy burden on your shoulders. And as you look around with, are you carrying Ambrose? You're carrying Ambrose. As you look out, you swear at the corner of your eyes, you see two shadowy figures that look exactly like you peering out from around a building and just as you look over there your heart sinks you're still filled with that denial of what happened but you've gotten past that anger that barrier that you put up which did not allow you to feel those other emotions you've broken that barrier with your axe with you, you can use that anger now differently to your advantage and to the advantage of the others around you. Your anger still fuels you, but it's a force of good, force that can protect others and yourself, but it does not dictate all of your emotions. Dara, as you walk, you feel frightened as you know what you're heading towards. This place that is the exact opposite of everything you stand and live for, you are heading right towards it. Though that power that you felt grows around you. With each step, you feel the power the energy of life guiding you. It walks with you. Bloom is attached to your heart, to your very essence. You feel comforted by the presence of this divine plant that was given to you and with its connection to your loved one. You feel as if you walk this path you can make a change for good and restore life to where there is none. Thank you. Thank you. 
And Amber's is unconscious. <laughs> Getting a well-deserved nap. <laughs> oh my god. We all uh, have a fucking nap. Uh, that's all I've got at the moment. Two things. First, fuck you, get bed. Kay. Second thing, holy shit. <laughs> yeah, holy shit. You sent me into a panic attack, I hope you know. Good. <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> He's the architect. What the fuck? fuck? Yeah, bitch. He truly is the architect. What the? <laughs> Bro. Oh, dude. At first, I was like, so, because like, Mikhail was like doing a silly, like, this is fucking ridiculous. He was laughing. That mm. happened because I could not stop laughing because I was like, this is so fucking cool. I was like, holy shit. Like, was I terrified? Yes. <laughs> but was I like, oh, 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 oh. a little, but <laughs> oh, like, oh. that's what was going on in my soul, but like in an excited way. Holy shit, man. Holy shit. Amen. Did you say amen? <laughs> no, but now I wish I did. <laughs> Just, uh, amen. Amen to that, brother. You guys begin traveling out of Sky Xanis. You finally um, enter like the wilderness part of Sky Xanis, which is kind of like a more serene marshlands. Like I was describing before, there's uh, pools of water here and there. Um, most of the high drivers have now made their nest in these pools of water. Um, it is becoming evening-ish. It'll be turning late evening as you continue traveling out of Sky Xanis. Um, by the end of the day, um, you can either uh, travel like straight up northeast or you can travel east and get to the main road, which would lead you into Karnaka, the, nether, the other um, city-state, and then from there leave. Or you can just okay. keep traveling in a straight line, which would lead you um, to like the, the grand forest of Karnaka. You have multiple ways of getting out of Lothmanger. It's just whatever you decide. You can travel straight east and get out of Anamnesis, but you'd have to go through the Ripple Rise district. Um, so, it's all up to you. I think, I think maybe going like northeast, that's the, that's diagonal. That's the fastest way, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Just cutting straight the foot through. Yeah. Cutting right the foot through. <laughs> yeah, I think that might be the best option. Yeah. Okay. We'll just go right around the Ripple Rise District. Are you going through the forest above uh, the Ripple Rise District? Hold on. Uh, I don't uh, know. So so we could either go this way and then go that way, or just go straight. I think we should maybe take this road. The road is wise. Yeah. So are we just going to head like straight west to the road and then basically just north? Are we going to east? Okay. East. I was like the other road. <laughs> so to the east, hit the road. Skidly diddly 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 up to the doll. No. To the doll. I think that's it. So essentially. Safe. If you travel directly east from here, you make your way out of Anamnesis completely and you can bypass the, the Grand Forest of Karnaka. Uh, you can go to the road, which would lead you north and then out of Karnaka. Or this you can one? go, yes. Okay. That leads the up. Is Karnaka. That the is forest. the, Karnaka is the city-state north of Longmaker. Oh, I lied. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. It's not on the map. That's it's the not, next city state. It's something in Anamnesis. It's the next city state of Anamnesis. Yes. So then actually going east to get the fuck out of Anamnesis as a whole and then going might be wiser so we don't have to go through an entire yeah, city again. Yeah, I don't want to go again. to another city state. I don't know what can happen. Shit can go wrong. Uh, Karna Karnaka is the... Um, how would I describe Karnaka? Is it going to be a good time or a bad time? Macau roll history. Okay. Yes, sir. Because you I don't fucking trust you anymore. Would Ambrose know? Ambrose would oh, know, asleep, but right? he's asleep. 
God damn it, Ambrose. History check with advantage? Or just history check? Sure, because you've been in an oh, Anesis. I thought that's what you said. Okay. Good job. Free. Okay, with a 13, uh, Karnaka is essentially a large city-state, which is ran by an elder, which governs the city-state. Um, but it is mostly, this place has the most uh, forest and nature preserved. Think of it like a national forest, if you will. Um, it is protected by the elder. Um, instead of there being towns and cities, um, the main city in Karnaka is basically just a massive village. It's not It's not built like Lothmang or Ditch where it's an actual city where there's cobblestone roads and everything like that. It's much more primitive is how I would think of it. There are tribes scattered all throughout Karnaka. Um, that essentially live together here peacefully. Uh, it's one of the more peaceful states in Lothmanger. Just chill. Or not Lothmanger, Ananasis. I was like, Ooh. Um There are like roads that lead from different tribes to different tribes. Um, but this place, usually uh, it's either different druids or clerics of either Fane or Kilo would be here. Um, this is just the place you would go to if you're looking to have a peaceful life. If you're not looking for trouble or conflict or um, to get into politics, really, Karnaka is the place to go. It might actually be wiser to go there. Also, um, it might- Ironically, I'm on a different beach. It might be nice to go there because if we go all the way easy to get out of Nemesis, where are we gonna sleep tonight? On the road? Scary. Um, what is your page? What page are you on? I don't want to bring what we're toting behind us in there. You make an excellent point. Yeah, I don't want to stop in any towns. Sleeping on the road it is. Yeah. To the east. We've done it before. Yeah. yeah. It is not a problem it. for me. I did not I think about that. I sleep in the tree. Did not think about that. I'd say you can make it to the road by nightfall where you have to make up camp. You don't okay. have to be on the road, but you you make it there. Okay. Okay. Ambrose still calling. Pretty boy sticking. Uh, back. he sure he'll be awake by now. Yeah, we'll see. You guys traveled long enough that at some point you just hear. Um. Mm. I was on that shit. <laughs> you all uh. right? Um, yeah, you can put me down now. You like taps your shoulder. Sorry about that. No, thank you for helping. I appreciate it. You're quite light. Uh, yeah, yeah, I would hope so. But Try to make my clothing efficient so I'm not caring so much. Or make okay? it heavy. Define okay. Do you remember anything of uh, that uh, happened? Yeah, um... Weird shit, huh? Yeah, I worse. remember being very frightened. I think that's and it shit. wasn't me, it was Jean. He was terrified beyond belief of that thing. Oh yeah, no, give me that clear. Yeah. He was a freak. And uh... I just innately fed off that. There was nothing I could do. My body and mind just latched onto and reacted to what he was feeling, which was just fear of another kind. Just, it's potent, it's powerful. It was almost violent. Yeah, but um, I don't know what he's been through exactly, but what I saw I said you saw some shit. Yeah. We saw some His shit. World. I saw glimpses of it. He felt frightened. But almost like he knew. 
You know when a storm's coming and the wind begins to pick up and the sky darkens, but the storm's not there yet. That impending doom. There's nothing you can do, like you were saying. That's what it was. That's what he felt. And he had to face it. I saw pieces of this world crumbling, being sucked up into this black abyss. I saw light. I felt warmth before it was ripped away from me. Like my very soul was torn apart like 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 you're ripping paper. And that paper is now spread like it's thrown to the wind. Scattered and lost. That's what he's feeling too. I don't know what that thing is, but John fears it. I don't... I don't want our world to end up like his. If Ambrister threatens this world, I want to help stop it. Agreed. I know Jean needs to find this Levi and Sai. But I think our duty lies with our world right now. His time will come. I don't want our world to become broken too. Same hat. You don't wear hats. No, I do not. There's a clash. Oh. What? Okay. I don't think either of you understood each other. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, sh- shit got a little bit worse after you, you know? Um. What happened? Uh. Perseverance, one of the individuals involved with the group of sinners back in ditch, um, showed up and Ambrister took over, said some pretty crazy things, um, and then basically like vowed to fuck us up. Yeah. Uh, said that apparently his goal is to s- spread the madness that's in the Mirefold. Yeah, he wants to uh, destroy the wall yeah. to Australia. And he wants the Red Mire to take over all of Skaven. So, uh, that's cool. Apparently, uh, here's where I'm confused if I'm being honest. He showed up instantly fucking mad. It was like, you keep fucking up my plan. I only remember the what's? Uh. Continual? Twice? Yeah, the, the the canister and the, the then canister. Uh, us attacking him. Yeah, that was like twenty four hours ago. I forgot. I did forget that that was him. directly tied to him. Yeah, I was more. I was less concerned because about that fucking more upset the, about He was going to use the canister to blow the hole. Well, yes, I know this, but I was more concerned because <laughs> and less about. Um, yeah, I wonder can we uh, like just choke that goblin. As soon as I'm able to, I like, I want to pop so his head off. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a like a fucking like a lid, just <laughs> stomp on it a couple times. Yeah, it's probably some juicy. Nice. Anyway, um, not what I was going to ask. On the same note of what the fuck, what is he gathering, gaining from this? Power. Power. World domination destruction. World domination. He's giving the world to a different god. If you, 
if you have the power of the gods, as, I he, don't. Says, as he says he does, if you have that kind of power and you release sickness and disease and death and terror and all that stuff out into the world and you are the only one that can maybe help or that is above everybody else who's now just fucking mad and crazy you you have all of it right here i have a theory he just wants to have a god complex literally and he's giving himself a god complex to make himself I mean, he already did when he said, bow before your new god yeah. king. He is fast tracking. Yeah, but he's making it worse. Mm-hmm. He's yes, you have, have, I have a theory. Mm-hmm. Bring so it home, that, big, that big thing. Yeah, big boy. Yeah. Vasilius. What? Vasilius is its name. Well, how oh. the hell? How the hell? How the hell? What? When we were all pulled into that place, and we were all scattered about, I've... It's something... <laughs> How do I spell it? Okay. Like this again. V-A-S. No. V-A. Is it? No, hold on. I'm, I'm forgetting. <laughs> V-A-S-Y dash L-I-A-S, or you switch the apostrophe in the dash. Vasilius. No, I was right. V a apostrophe s y dash l i a s. I was correct. I was right on the punctuation. I like my vas- my Vaseline. Vaseline should make it easier. Okay, we, we can't know. forget about the moon, yeah. bitch. <laughs> also, Vasilas. Was it Vasilas? Okay, okay, now I viewed the biosphere from space, and I spoke with the first three. What? The blue What? The blue. Bl- Siam Gull and the Cosmic Tree Matica. What? And. Oh, pause! Pause! <laughs> I walk away. I stand like this for a second. What the fuck? <laughs> and then I turn back around and come back. Okay, continue. You seem to be connected to all of it. Are you a god? I. I'm not sure, but just like the biosphere, it has been reforged time and time again. Like, wait, what the fuck does that mean? What? What's, what's been reforged? What? Say, say that word again. Re- I'm confused. Reforged, reharmonized. What? You? Uh, what? You as a you as a person? Like what? The, the mark? Huh? Well. Um, it seems that I'm a little more connected to this world than I initially thought. I need you to speak like I'm 12. Yeah. Dumb I am down. five years old. Dumb I didn't go to school. Help. I am a little- We are little children and, and your I eyes know how to do math. That was already here. <laughs> <laughs> this world is essentially a machine and my job is to make sure that it continues to turn. And I'm... I feel like I'm kind of connected to everything in a very abstract way. Okay. Um, yeah. You're kind of just like the red string that connects everything. Yeah. Those These like... ones are kind of gold strands. Well, right. you get my point. Yeah. Like, if you're still connected yeah. to all this shit, but... Gold. Well, I was there, I... Specifically gold? Yeah. Okay. And somewhere <laughs> out there, Sasha is still out there. You feel, like, I felt good. his heart beating. Good, 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 good. Sasha's alive? And I focused on that light. I, it rendered a faint image of him. And there was a pulse where his heart was. Our heartbeats were in sync. Frankly, that's great news! That's horrifying. Okay. I'm sorry. I'll go fuck myself. No. <laughs> You're welcome to your own opinion. And I've kind of moved to a strange power, but 
how this ties back to Vasilius and all these things is that they have asked me to restore the rift so that they could bring their creator back. And uh. how this all ties to my theory is that Vasilius is essentially the blooming gods are collecting life energy from this world. Whenever someone dies, that life energy is collected and stored. Stored. For him. So perhaps the reason why Emberster and all these people wish to knock these gates down, to bring about a plague, to bring about a massive amount of death, is to release a bunch of life energy. And, and perhaps he could so be. So this so world is just har- harvesting its inhabitants. Yep. Yeah. In we order are, to get that's kind of fucked. We're just cattle. And I believe Amber Sturkiori wants to bring about this to maybe be in Vasilius's favor. That's just a theory. Well, at this point, frankly, I think I'm one of his favorite yeah. things. Kill the water bitches! You're, you're welcome! <laughs> you're so welcome! I got and, you like people's daughter here. What? And. We'll get to that. <laughs> and my your whole deal is to like stop the rift from. No, to, to do it. To, oh, to restore to it. it. I don't want that open. That's counterproductive. <laughs> that is concerning, actually, especially considering. Or, or are you over- providing a way to open it without mass murder? Is that kind of what you're getting at? Well. Or do people still need to die? You said that this world is like a machine. Yeah. If that thing created this as a machine, there would be no reason to destroy it. So maybe bringing it back is not a bad thing? But then if that's, if it's not a bad reason, then why is Jean so terrified of it? I don't know, perhaps. Perhaps something is linked to the other three biospheres. Hold up. Huh? Hey, so you know how you were just I... dropping like a shit ton of stuff? So hey, we're gonna backtrack a little bit. Yeah. Three? Yes. <laughs> All kind of forming a triangle around our own. Wait. Wait. They oh, form huh? a triangle around us? Huh? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, sure. Like, like Wait, this? What? With us in the middle? And I just like grab these pebbles. <laughs> yeah. What? That's what I'm And thinking. we're in the middle. Why the fuck are we in the middle? What are the other biospheres? I... Is that where fucking candy is from? I'm not sure. I love it. No, Candy definitely did not because she came through the rift. Yes. These are all. Daryl doesn't know that. These are all. Understandable. <laughs> Daryl's also fucking stupid. Wait, wait, okay. So. So this. This. This biosphere that we're on. Yeah. It's a machine, technically. Yes. This news to you is beyond groundbreaking because throughout all of your lives, one, this was like the only world this is a planet yeah knowing of other worlds is um non-existent and and it's harvesting life energy for the architect or or for the for the rift what which for him for the rift do you want me help explaining yeah because it's probably somewhere in there but i also wrote a lot of jamie gets it the cow is trying to comprehend. Go ahead and um, roll an intelligence check for me. 
I know What's exactly up? what's going on here. And one of my theories was correct, and I want to die. Then. Restore balance. <laughs> Thank you, proficient. Thank you, proficiency. That's better. 15? Sure. With a 15. Um, so. Recall. These blooming gods, when you saw them, each resided over one of the three biospheres that were surrounding oh, Ethos. Okay. The golden light that you saw came from these biospheres and were surrounding Ethos. They are harvesting life energy, energy and storing them somewhere on their planet and then releasing that energy onto Ethos to power the rift to open it up and allow their creator to come back. The rift is broken, so he could not return. And you were told by them that Ethos is a machine that is being powered by all the creations and all the mortal life on Ethos. All the life on there is powering um, the other blooming gods, planets, or whatever it is. And then they are harvesting it, that life form, or life energy, and shooting it back at the rift as this energy. That's what the fucking thing was when it opened. Is that what it was? Oh, oh. my fuck. But fuck. It's, it's not only when they die that life energy is released, just usually when mortals die. The entire biosphere itself is a machine, but it is also life itself. Yes, yeah. biological yep. machine, as you described. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, it is a biological machine. Okay. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. I got, but I missed. Yeah. yeah. No, you're good. Cool. Just wanted to make sure the 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 bridges were connecting. So we're powering them. They're powering the rift. <laughs> I'm going to see this through. Sacrifice the launch. Okay. Now, where's the break in the chain? Why is it broken? Yeah, like the rift clearly didn't fucking work. Yeah, it, it's not even just. The so are we not powering the looming gods, or is there a shit not working? You know this. <gasps> this is told to you. Catch it. You should know this too. <laughs> Did I catch it? Do you want me to recall your memory? Fucking <laughs> please. Memory yeah. recall. My mind. Is you were getting so the scene much. Of having the blooming gods like blow Mirage's mind. And so I could channel that right. They told you that the rift is broken. Mm -hmm. And that shards of it are spread across Skathen. And they need to be collected and returned back to the rift. Ambrister has several of them right now. And he's going to use them to destroy Skathen. Yeah. They want you to get it back to restore the rift. Basically restoring the machine because it is not functioning properly right now. Everson wants to destroy his game. Yes. They told you that he threatens the balance of ethos and, yeah. just, and okay. he threatens destroying the machine. That oh, is yeah, what I did get that. That is what you would recall. Wants to destroy the machine. Yes. Correct. Holy shit. I guess we need the machine by us here. Yes. Yeah. Oh shit, I have to recall my watch. <laughs> oh no. When was this? Huh. The knowledge that I gained about the uh, zeniths. What session was that? 
What do you mean about the Zeniths? When you got your like individual so much information about them. when you went to the church, the other one, or uh, the 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 fucking cursed one. Yeah, uh, Carsonon. Huh? The the cars uh, the Seculum Carsonon. Is that what you're talking about? I'm pretty sure. The one with the test select being trapped. Uh huh. What about it? Yeah, isn't that in the fucking place we're not supposed to go? That's in Lothmanger. Not in, in the Zenith. Yes. I believe from what you were told is that you know, uh, you know what? Just go ahead and roll me an intelligence check, and I'll see oh, how much Jesus. I'll give you to help you recall. And intelligence. Sure. Just shoot me now. Okay. I'll help you out a little bit. That Zenith in particular, Teth Select, um, maybe not himself exactly, but there was a building that was constructed that acts as a prison that keeps Teth Select and the Vesiculum Carcinon in there. Yeah. Right. Because if that Vesiculum gets out, that could spell big bad ruin because does anyone remember what it does? I don't think I wrote the Seculum and Carson on down. Which, which the Seculum was it you said? Carson on. Cars or Carcer on. Uh, uh, um, because I know, I think it was either you or Ambrose specifically said this would be their worst enemy. Was it memory? No, no, that's, that's the yeah. So I'm looking. I'm looking. This one is essentially it brings your thoughts and imagination into physical form. Uh, right. Uh, so he has no, he no. is trapped inside with this vesiculum as to try to keep it contained and not getting out. Oh my god, uh, that's fucking. Awful. Yeah. And that's what was Ambrose's worst. He's just stuck with that shit all yep. the time. Yep. Fuck, bro. Do you see the problem? And that's why, yeah, that's a huge problem. Also, that's why they're like, you know, we're not gonna be seeing much of him. Mans is tormented daily in a prison. Of his own making at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that Oxtaff or Multarian? Oxtaff. Oxtaff. Okay. Yeah, I just needed to make sure that one awful. detail that the cursor on was in there. That's all I needed to make sure of. Mm. The rest of it was all locked away in the corner. I was like, yeah, I can get that if I needed it. Talking like I'm a fucking local. I'm like, is that an odd staff or multiple? Or multi <laughs> <laughs> really quick. That's not a turn else that I wore. that. All right. Ah. So, Man. as you guys are talking, you would eventually make your way to the road at nightfall and set up camp to get a well-deserved rest after a partially filled day of jovial celebration and the rest of it being filled with utter devastation <sighs> well some devastation and some divine information and others looked within themselves and found yes and grew and so others just gained power so with that, we'll go ahead and this session of Fragments of a Lost Home, we will continue next time with you guys traveling onwards towards Acelia. And so, our protagonists begin their march towards Acelia, the holy city the last bastion against the Mirefold Scourge. Ambrister has set forth, promising to throw Skathen into unbalance by using the Mirefold to gain dominance over the Biosphere. He has set his minions to attack different towns in hopes of spreading chaos and gaining an advantage in overthrowing Ocelia. The Rift Seekers are now on a path to even the scales and save the Biosphere. Well, that's all I have for you today. If you want more, why not consider joining our Discord? There you can talk to the players of the campaign and be a part of our lovely community. Thank you again for listening, dear friend. And goodbye for now.